Y'all ready to be history? Get started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Thanks to Tribooth, the best vocal booth for home or on the road voice recording. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robert Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO stars, George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters, voiceover talent and home studio guy. Line up, ladies! Here we go. And welcome to another Pro Audio Suite. Thanks to Tribooth. Don't forget the code T R I P A P 200 to get $200 off your purchase. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Now, this week we're going to talk about the um, new or latest loop back for the SSL 2. But before we do, don't forget the Passport VO, which is our exclusive interface. There's only 100 being made. We're now into week two. Mm-hmm. Um, if you grab yours, you can use the link in the show notes on this podcast. You can go to the ProAudioSuite.com um, website. You'll find a link there, or you can just go straight to Centrance uh, and uh, make your purchase. The cost, $699 for your Passport VO. Uh, you're also going to be in the running for the half an hour consult with Robert, the half an hour consult with George and a demo being made by Robbo Brand new with demo. a little bit of assistance. I'll just sit there uh, <laughs> with me. I'll just listen. It's the usual I'll presence in the studio, let's be honest. Yeah, and if you yeah. if you buy it earlier, you get you still have seven chances yes. if you buy yeah. right now, today, I think. Yeah. And then buy today you got seven you get seven tickets in the raffle to tomorrow win those prizes. You've only got six. Uh, tomorrow you get six and, and the day after by the five. end of the week that's it. So yeah. and by the time you're listening to this we don't have no. We have no idea of knowing if it's even already sold out. It could be. <laughs> yeah. Could be. Well, that's true. Yeah. Let's hope yeah. it is. That would be perfect. Yes. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. For our sake, we might have sold in the first week. Yeah. <laughs> first day. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah. And if it is, that means that uh, you've got a chance of buying the next one too. I suppose. So exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, on that well, note, let's. I'm sure. Um, if, if it went that quick, we'll be doing another round. We will be. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Anyway, back to this new feature from SSL for the SSL2 with Loopback, which I have actually downloaded, surprisingly, um, <laughs> with some difficulty. Um, so, What was the challenge? That was the main challenge, getting it uh, onto the system. Oh, just me, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, 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 main, the main challenge for Andrew was finding the download button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the download folder. I That's just right. looked at it exactly. sweating for a while going, oh, do I really want to press that button? Yeah. And I, no, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I don't really encourage people to install things they don't need without the uh, Well, without especially warning. something that's a firmware update. Yeah. Like, this isn't just like installing software. Like A firmware update is sort of like a brain transplant in a it way is. or something. Yeah. A lobotomy. Well, a lobotomy would imply that you're not putting anything oh, back. Oh, that's true. But there was the other... <laughs> yeah, exactly. But there was the other issue that uh, once I actually downloaded it, I, it was like, well, where actually is it? Mm-hmm. So then the search mm-hmm. began. And of course, I do remember, George, you helped me out once when we were looking for finding a channel, like either Channel 1 or Channel 2 on the interface, where I had to go. Right. So at the, right, at the, right. at the 11th hour, after thinking this thing has, hasn't downloaded and it's not in Twisted Wave, I clicked on that and found it. And there they were. Okay. So now well, Where does it install to? Does it show up as an application or does it show up in your system preferences? It comes area. up in the preferences. How do you find it? Yeah. So I'll right. show you because you're actually on my computer, George. I'm looking at your screen now so I can kind of be like a virtual support guy like I do yep. for folks. How, how much is this going to cost, Andrew? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're oh, left you kidney. have no idea. <laughs> yeah. You have no idea. Yeah. The exchange rate like, makes it ex- no, especially it, brutal. It's actually you, Robert. <laughs> You'll right. be dressing up as a gimp doing his housework. But uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean dressing up as one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so, George, what are you into? Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad you're showing me this, Andrew. Do you remember? Remember when you said the feature came out and my first reply wasn't, hey, that's awesome. I'm so glad they did it. It was, if they did it like Audion, it's not useful. Uh, that's what they did. <laughs> so, 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 you know, the thing about loopback is there's really two kinds of loopback. If, I think, if you think of a loopback, one kind of loopback is the way voiceovers want it, which is I want to play back something I recorded to somebody listening to me on communications, you know, comms. 
Um, call it comms. Everybody get used to that term, okay? Comms. That would be C O double M S. C O double M S. What does comms mean to you? Yeah. So you have someone on comms and they're on the session, you want to play back something, right? So that's the way we think of loopback. However, the way someone making a device for producing a podcast is an entirely different way of thinking about loopback. And what that means is now they want to take that return signal from comms and not mix it with the input, but put it someplace else so on other channels. Because what you'd want to do for a podcast is you would want to record somebody on comms coming back to you on two other tracks or one other track and not have it all be mashed together so that in post you could do a mix, right? So let me let me put this a little bit like simpler. One type of loopback is to feed what you're hearing back to the people that you're connected to, yep. feed your output back into your input. Right. The other kind of loopback, which is I would argue the more common kind of loopback, is to take your output and turn it into yet another input. So if you have a two-channel interface, the loopback would show up as like three, four. Correct. Even though it's really one, Correct. two output. That's right. Yeah. And so that sounds inherently useful, and it is, and it is because now you can... They're both you, useful. They're both useful, yeah. right? The issue here being is that a lot of comms software are kind of basic, and they only can hear what's on input one and two. two. So now what happens is when you hit play on that, on your software, it's not getting routed back to an input that the comm software can see. Um, and so you don't get a complete loop back kind of scenario in terms of playing back something to your client, right? And that is unfortunately what the SSL has opted to do. Um, and it's just because that's they, they listen to what the users wanted, and this is what the users wanted. Well, it's funny because uh, with the audience, Richie, when he set that up, he actually, he directed 20 and 21, channels 20 and 21, to channels 1 and 2, which meant I can use any of the channels as right. opposed to just 1 and 2. Because it's a lot more, because your audience setup has a very sophisticated DSP mixer with route. So you can do a tremendous amount of routing under the hood, which is what I do all the time with the Apollo, right? It's what makes it more flexible, but a lot Except more you difficult have to, to set up. Right. But you have to wrestle the Apollo to the ground yes. to get rid of all the other inputs and to tell it that actually its output, which is aux one, I think is what you usually right, do, right. make that input one, right. which probably crashes the head of every employee over at <laughs> Universal Audio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. There will be a picture of you, George. There will be a picture of you with it on a dartboard, I'm guaranteeing. Right. Well, I mean, props <laughs> to SSL for adding a feature that wasn't there out of thin air. Like, um, this is a play out of the playbook that Steinberg and y Yamaha did when they released the Steinberg UR12, which is a very, very inexpensive entry-level USB interface that's really similar to the Scarlet Solo. Um, they added the same kind of a feature where it just, it was available when it wasn't before. However, it didn't show up as channel three and four. It was a firmware and driver thing. And you had to go into system preferences of your Mac or Windows control panel and find the little driver app, open that up, and then you had a little checkbox called loopback. And that's all it did. When you turned it on, it was looping back. When you unchecked it, it wasn't. And that's all it did. And it it's fine. It's it's great. Thing is, if you leave that on while you're in a session, you're going to drive your client nuts. They're going to hate you. They don't want to hear themselves <laughs> looping back to themselves, right? So it's a, it's a trade-off. You're either creating one, you're trading one problem for the other. Now, I yeah. think we have a better way to do this. I think well, I we know Source do. Elements does. <laughs> well, so, yeah, we, well, uh, yes, we Source Elements, we have Nexus, yeah. um, and th this is true, but um, in hardware, we, the Pro Audio Suite, might have a better way of doing this. Oh, we might. Oh, yes. And we may, <laughs> and we shall. <laughs> yes. We shall conquer. So I played a recording of what oh, we were yes. talking about before we started this episode? <laughs> no. <laughs> better not. not. Better not. <laughs> but, uh, It'll sound like a boxing yeah. match, right? But this <laughs> is a problem that we, that we here have wanted to solve for you, the users, the voice actors, and we wanted to solve it for you know a while now. I know I've wanted to solve it a long time, and we found a solution, and we're really excited to share it with you. And if you want to know what that is, answer the questionnaire. Sign up. Go to the website. Answer the questionnaire. 
That will get you entered entered into our mailing list so we can keep you abreast of what's coming. And I don't know why I use those words in this room, but that's okay. <laughs> and, we'll, <laughs> and we'll make sure you know what we have in uh, mind. But I, I'm I'm glad SSL did it. It's it's great that they had a feature. It's taking a play out of the road playbook. I'll give Road huge props for being the ones that add features after the sale for no additional money. They've done that so many. T- they did it for three solid years with the Roadcaster, adding features. You know, month after month, year after year. That just blew me away. Until Road started doing that, I've never seen a hardware manufacturer do it. It's not that nobody did. I just never seen it. So, uh, yeah. yeah. What's going to be really interesting, actually, is, and I'm fingers crossed that we're actually going to get uh, one of these mics to play with, but we did talk about the NT1 Gen 5 mm-hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago. We discussed yeah. that. Um, it looks like they're going to send us all a mic to play with. So I- I'm Ooh. looking forward to that because it could be... <laughs> so so these, are the, these are the XLR, XLR and USB, yeah. isn't that? Yeah. I just think it's a get-out-of-jail mm. card, that mic. I know we're sort of going off on the tangent again, but... Sorry. Good one to travel oh, with. God, imagine if yeah. you if your interface, you know, something happened to it and you had a session. Yeah, none of this sort of scrabbling for the, a USB. The, the only thing it doesn't have is 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 the uh, it it's like the USB without the headphone return. Yeah, well, that's the thing. There's no headphones, is there? There's yeah. no zero latency. But that's okay. Just use the headphone amp in the laptop. Yeah, it's fine. There's no zero latency yeah. monitoring. That's right. Yeah. The, the the Road Central app, or no, is it the Road? I always get to the yeah, two yeah. apps. Don't say it. They have Road Don't Connect and they have Road. Saucy, saucy. Yes. Yeah. Saucy. <laughs> yeah. So they have these two apps, and the and the second one, the Road. Connect uh, app has you know <laughs> it has a lot more routing playback capability and stuff in it and it can probably do a lot of what you need to do um, but it, yeah there is no zero latency monitoring for headphones so if that's a thing for you you're gonna find it annoying um, but you know I watched a bunch of the videos from Rode um, today about their 32-bit float recording and I did start to be swayed. But I still feel like 24-bit recording at 144 decibels of signal-to-noise ratio is enough to capture a mic that theoretically can produce about 128 decibels of signal-to-noise ratio, right? Because it's a 4 but, dB but what, self-noise. What were they saying? What were they saying is the reason to do 32-bit float? The, the reason they're saying is that you truly do not set gain at all, right? So whatever the gain is at the preamp stage is obviously the minimum possible amount of gain, right? Because if you right. if you have a preamp, okay. you at some but, point but, you're going to clip it. Okay, and, can I say something? And this mic can handle 132 dB, right? So the only point where you can clip the preamp is when you give it a source of more than 132 decibels, right? That's when you're going to clip its preamp. Go ahead, so, Robert. So here's, here's the logic behind this. Like, yes, we said this about 24-bit years ago, which is you can record at such a ridiculously low level that when you gain it up, you're not adding in digital noise. Your Alien signal things. is still yeah. is still is still captured at least, you know, if you're minus 48, you're capturing it at least 16 bit level. Okay. So now you have to look at how it is that 32 bit float works. And what it basically is is the 32 bit number is chopped into two parts and it has I can get the official names of them. I forget, but one side is sort of the Take payload. Word for it. Read, read, read the road article about it because they go into a tremendous detail. You, they use words like mantissa. Yes, and exactly. Like so you right. <laughs> so one is the one is the payload, yeah. and the other one is the multiplier. Right. When you start your recording, the multiplier is zero because it doesn't know what you're going to do if you're going to be loud or soft. So it's just recording at that zero level with that super low nominal preamp level. And all it's doing is actually filling 23 bits. Because I think it's I think it's 23 bits plus one plus eight. And the multiplier is eight bit. Mind you, that one of that eight is all zeros. So you're capturing at 23 bit. And not until you later give this file to somebody and then they use the 32 bit float to add gain to it, do those zero bits, the 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 eight bit with the sine one, which is uh the one on its own, those are just zero. You you might as well just 
capture it 24-bit, save your data, and then if you need it to be 32-bit float, gain it up or convert the file to 32-bit. But there's no... I, I, I think you actually lose a bit. If you record a 32-bit float compared to 24-bit, I think you're losing a bit because the big word in 32-bit float is a 23-bit word. Well, they, they tout this redonkulous dynamic range mathematically, right? It's like 1,300-something decibels. I can't remember what the number. Yeah, was. because you can because you can multiply, multiply, but that's not the right, capture, right. right? But that that's not what's captured. No, it's not. Right? It's not. What's captured is the entire 128 decibel dynamic range of that mic. That's what's captured. I would argue that what's being captured is if it's 23 bit. Um, well, maybe just a hair under that. 138. 138. Okay. Yeah. So 24 bit would give you 144. But the range. thing is, did you notice how it has a stacked DAX or stacked a, uh, analog to digital converters? Did you notice that? And it's no, I, I did not notice that. So what they're no. doing is the tricky part is they have um, stacked a bunch of AD converters. They say there's four, and they're all calibrated at different amounts of gain, essentially. So that's what they're doing to deal with overloads. And in, in the demo, the guy actually yells into the mic, and it is dramatically clipping, right? And then he goes into, he's using Reaper, and he just, no, he just normalizes it. He literally uses normalize. That's it. And it's absolutely clean. There's not a clip in it. So that's the secret sauce. I think the secret sauce is the, is the stacked AD converters. That's what I think is really cool. Like that, to me, is what's really neat. And it's a, it's a feature that, it's overshadowed by this whole 32-bit float thing. But at the end of the day, if you just did the same thing at 24-bit, where, you know, zero is zero, or zero is minus 144, right? And whatever, uh, what's the maximum the mic can do? 132, 132 dB is the maximum SPL the mic can handle. Right, right. And that's the top of the, that's zero, and everything else is in between. It's the same. Right. It's so, the same so, thing. So twenty four bit twenty four bit exceeds the capabilities of the microphone. Right. That's what I'm seeing based on what I'm reading. Like, it's got a four dB self noise, so that's the bottom. It has a hundred thirty two dB input clip. That's the that's the point where the capsule it hits the other side of it. it yeah, it literally <laughs> the clips. Other, right. Shorts out. Basically, I'm assuming or, either the capsule itself is bottoming out or the preamp itself is clipping at that point one yeah, or the other the, in the, in the, right yeah. which is why some mics have a pad switch right it gives you that extra 10 to 20 db of headroom right right at the mic right, exactly so so that's all happening right and so that is what that's the magic to me that's the magic it's not the 32-bit float so when you're done recording the problem with the the thing that 32-bit float fixes is that when you're done recording your input levels aren't at minus 123 or well they are until you turn it up mm, yeah well, well but whatever the zero point is it's somewhere in the middle so sometimes you're clipping sometimes you're way way under it's really weird here's the way here's the way i think it probably and maybe is and should be imagine if the gain knob is connected to those last eight bits in a sense the audio file is carrying the preamp setting in a sense so here's the preamp coming in at a nominal level so you can record a jet airplane at full level at 120 decibels without touching the preamp okay and then the preamp you turn it up and you're saying all right i want this huge sound to be even louder and obviously if you do that it's going to clip and then later you give that file to somebody and then someone looks at that file and says okay someone turned the preamp up i'm going to turn it back down and now it's not clipped again. So at least, you know, you're kind of sending the file with its preamp in there. Um, but it doesn't give you resolution is the point. It's not like, you know, people say that 32-bit um, float has this thousand decibel, you know, capability. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's, you know, it's, it's much bigger than 100, uh, than 24-bit. And that doesn't mean that its resolution is higher because it's still just, you know, you think about that waveform. It's a very detailed thing. And you just get a certain number of bits to describe that waveform. And after that, you can zoom into it or zoom out of it, which is basically what you're doing with the gain. But 
the picture you get of that thing at first. We've all zoomed into a photo. If you zoom into it, it falls apart if you zoom too far into it. And the exact same thing happens. So with 32-bit, I think you're truly capturing a, if I understand right, I think you're actually capturing a a 23-bit sort of picture of this thing, of this sound, and then you're manipulating the gain afterwards. Yeah, that's, and, I guess that's what's happening. It's a, it's a very interesting thing. I, I don't really understand how it fits into actual music production workflow. They, they keep showing the mic in a studio plugged in, you know, and there's a musician playing into it. But I don't really understand how that, like doing overdubs kind of works or how proper monitoring set up. Like, I don't understand how the monitoring part works. Like, say if you're a musician and you're singing and you do want to monitor yourself through something, how does that, how do you parse that? Like, since you're not setting gain, how do you set up the monitoring bus properly? And if it does clip while you're monitoring, you know, you're still clipping your monitoring, right? So there, there's still some some questions. Like, if you're recording a very loud source, like a like a fucking rock. Sorry, can I say that on the show? <laughs> yes, we always do. <laughs> fucking I, I, th- oh. I think you might be the, the, the <laughs> fucking that rock might and be roll the singer. Fucking yeah. first swear. They're they're yeah. they're gonna you know if they're doing um nine inch nails Trent Reznor or or uh you know uh, Foo Fighters right Slipknot. it's gonna clip the pre right so now the musician monitoring their cans listening to themselves through the reverb and all the other crap that they want to hear is now hearing themselves clipping while they're singing so that ain't gonna work folks so it's it's not a it's not a panacea but it for $250 a mic it's pretty good <laughs> it's pretty good it's a get out of jail free card when when someone messes up is yeah, what it like, is because what are you going to so you're going to tell the singer hey can you stand back from the mic another foot you're still clipping you're still clipping the difference is when you get asked to convert that 32 bit float back to a 24 bit or a 16 bit word because whoever you gave it to doesn't understand it yeah but every software does understand it now is there any DAW out there that doesn't understand 32 bit float i wonder I mean, I would. Audacity, I, it's a good even. question. I, yeah, I mean, Audacity does. Pro Tools does. Reaper does. Yeah. Logic. I it's assume been around does. Enough. Cubase apparently does sixty-four bit float. I saw actually saw that on an FAQ. Should I record in sixty-four bit float? Talk about math Jesus. redonkulousness. <laughs> um, yeah, that's crazy. So yeah, but I, I, we're all gonna. Well, I guess we're gonna get one, so yeah. we can really Fingers hammer crossed, on it and yeah. see what it does. But yeah. I, I was impressed by the road demo. I thought it was good. They did a two part video about it, and seeing the stacked eight, the stacked A to D converter was a very clever way of dealing with it because that's the that was the missing piece that yeah, makes that might be the thing that makes more sense. Yeah, that's what it, makes yeah. the Zoom recorder the F three. And and the other ones that have no gain, that's the part that's missing from them. They may have them, maybe it's patented, maybe they don't tell you, but that's the part I didn't understand. At some point, you're clipping the AD converter, so what are you doing about that? And so to have, the, have them stacked up at different gain ranges makes sense. A lot of sense. So anyway, the conclusion is, uh, with the SSL2... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> was this about the SSL? We're just going to edit all that out. Road. Yeah. Edit all that out. Uh, yeah. uh, classic. Yeah. We, this is this is the Pro Audio Suite ADD. <laughs> yes, Speaking of right. AD converters. I've just been folding my washing, so uh, I'm feeling much <laughs> we, better we, now. <laughs> we need an ADD converter here. Um, but, uh, yeah, speaking of the SSL... But as a, I, I'm, I'm giving props. It's still the unit that I overwhelmingly recommend. I think to most actors because of its form factor. As much as anything else, sound quality is fine. It's nothing wrong with it. It just is nice to use. <laughs> like the knobs are on top. You know, it's nice. Andrew, to- Andrew, and I were connected earlier today, and he was playing with the 4K button, and it does have like a nice. I mean, it's. It's doing something probably more than you really wanted to, but it, yeah. actually it's kind of like, it's got some cut to it. If you're on a dull, um, very dull mic, and there are some dull mics being made now, like the Cinco D2 shotgun mic is super dull. Have you heard that mic? I'm sure you have. It's like really dull and flat. And you punch that 4K, it does bring some life to the mic. It sounds more, dare I say, 416 Forty-one six ish. Correct. And when that, you hit the, the button, yeah. And that, what I was but saying. You to, push that button yeah. on a forty-one six, and I have a client who sent me a bunch of audio recorded that way, and to Give master, he had to master their <laughs> audio book. And I'm like, no, man. If you've got that <laughs> button off, turn turn that button yeah. off. It is way too bright and crispy. <laughs> but if you're in a like it, I was yeah. t- saying to Robert before, if you're in a really boxy sort of situation where, you know, it just sounds pretty 
awful, boomy, yeah, then be. you just press this button and all of a sudden it's gone. Well, it's not gone, but it certainly it does help. It's just you, you, you've distracted with yeah. high frequency. Have a listen you, to the difference. Well, it, I've, got, I've got it on yeah. now and if I turn it off, that's gone. But you turn the thing back on, it's really super, it's super it cutty. Yeah. yeah. And this is on the uh, Austrian no, it, no, I'm actually not because I'm sitting out here. I'm actually on an NTG5. Oh, an NTG5. Yeah, and that's a little bit of a bright it's mic, a but microphone. it's not yeah. quite as bright as the 416. Yeah. It's not quite as the flat. The NTG5 definitely has more bass than the 416. Yeah, yeah, and it's not quite as flat as the NTG3, which was very... Very flat. Yeah. Flat. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I always say it on my other show, if it sounds good, it is good. So. Yeah. <laughs> if it if it makes yeah. sense for the context of your mic and what you're doing, then it's that's a bonus. It's a bonus. That's and just if, the fact that it's there is nice. And if it feels good, it's probably your own. <laughs> oh my God. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Trimus. And Austrian Audio. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say good day, drop us a note at our website. Theproaudiosuite.com.